Hey everybody, how's it going? Thanks for being here. Thanks as always for clicking on the video. We really appreciate it. We're happy to have you here with us. This is a pretty cool community we're building here, learning about salmon fishing and the different techniques and whatnot. So today we're talking about meat rigs. We're going to talk about really what they are, how to fish them, some different tactics and techniques, how to put them together, a whole bunch of uh, things that if you don't know much about meat rigs, or even if you do, uh, you'll probably pick some things up here today. So stick around. So welcome back. Like I said, today we're talking about meat rigs, how to fish them, the tactics, the techniques. Uh, meat rigs are an absolute fish destroyer out there. They will put extra fish in your box when everything else is, uh, has stopped working for the day. So uh, one thing I, I like to do sometimes before we get into the videos, I like to uh, read a list of new subscribers that we got to the channel, and this is just a small list. But uh, for everybody that has subscribed you know, recently or in the past, been with us for a long time, we just want to say thanks. And This is kind of our way of doing that. So uh, some new subscribers. we got uh, Young Guns Angling, Troy Asher, J.I., Lori S., David Smallwood, Merle Gates, Simply Midwest Fishing, and a bunch of others. Hey, thanks for being here. Uh, like I said, we really appreciate it. And some of these people actually have pretty cool channels too. We go in and we check those out. Um, yeah, so... Uh, any of those, hey, if you want to check them out, feel free. Uh, like I said, some are some are pretty interesting. So let's talk about meat rigs. First off and foremost, you know, really, what are they? How we fish them uh, here on the Great Lakes and other places around the world, I'm sure. Um, I understand meat rigs. I, I talk to a lot of guys, and you know, do you fish meat? And I'll hear this quite a bit. No, I don't. I really don't know how to do it. Um, you know, it can be a little intimidating if you don't know how to fish meat rigs. You hear about guys running meat programs and. Boy, the meat bite was great today. And, you know, you hear all these things and it can sound like gibberish to you. But we're going to take care of that today. We're going to give you, we're going to give you the knowledge and the information that you need, so you can go out there and comfortably and confidently run meat rigs in your program, and you're going to catch some fish. So let's talk about meat rigs. Really, we're going to start off right there, the basics, the essentials, what they are, uh, and we'll go over the factors with them. And uh, I want to say thanks for everybody that voted for this video. If you haven't checked out our other, some of our other fundamental fishing videos, we got videos on uh, spoons, and we got videos on flash or fly, how to tie flash or fly, just a whole bunch of stuff. And I'll throw some links up here, obviously, as the video goes on. But hey, if you check those out, we appreciate it. So what is a meat rig? A meat rig is essentially a method to take cut bait, which is typically a herring cut strip or some other type of bait fish cut down into a strip, you're going to take that and put it into a meat rig and you're going to introduce that um, with some flash and some flasher uh, down into the uh, water columns to see if you can catch fish. And like I just said, that can sound a little confusing, I get that, but we're going to, we're going to take care of that here. So these are cut strips right here. This is the most common way that I see um, running meat rigs on the Great Lakes. Uh, strips come, this is Dreamweaver cut strips. These come in six packs. Um, there's a whole bunch of companies out there that put out meat strips. So we'll start right here. We'll talk about the strips. Uh, most of them come in six packs. Dreamweaver makes them. Stinger makes them. Familiar Bite makes them. Uh, we really like the Dreamweaver strips. They're really durable. They catch fish day in, day out. I'm not saying the other companies aren't good. They are. This is just what we prefer. Uh, and let's talk a little about how we prepare our strips. <clears throat> really, they come prepared. They're pretty tough right out of the package. Uh, what I mean by that, they're pretty durable. You can catch several fish on one meat strip. But one thing I do like to do with these, I'll take them out of the package and I'll throw them into a tub of water and I'll let them, uh, let them melt down a little bit. And I'll just take a handful of non-iodized salt and I'll throw that in there as well. And the container that I use is a, uh, a sealable, airtight container that I'll actually, once I throw that salt in there and that water in there, I'll seal it up put it in my fridge, and it's good to go. And those strips will last a long, 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 long time. They'll last a whole season sometimes. So that's really the easiest way. If, you, if you're going to do a brine on these things, it's not really even a brine. It's just a handful of salt into some water, sealed container, put it in your fridge, and they're going to last a long time. They'll even expand a little bit. So when you go to fit them into your meat heads, and we'll talk about that more here in a little bit, they, they fit a little bit better. So I like that as well. The other... <clears throat> Sorry, here's some of the stinger uh, meat strips as well. Talked about stinger and the dream weaver. The other style of meat strips are whole herring. 
and that's a uh, Dreamweaver blue label and the, the colors are specific to the size of the herring inside here. And blue label, if I'm not mistaken, are either the largest or the second largest um, herring. So the way that these are prepared, and I'm not going to go over this today. Uh, I'll do it in a separate video later on. There's actually some really good videos out there on how to prepare these things. If you look up uh, John King's YouTube channel, I think it's called Meat Fishing. Uh, he goes over in a great way. He goes over a great way how to cut these up, how to brine them, how to prepare them. Uh, but these are another type of meat strips or meat that you're going to use in your meat rigs. So really, that's the the two um, basic styles of meat. You either got the pre-prepared strips, or you got the whole herring that you're going to do yourself. It's really up to you. Uh, typically, for us throughout the year, these we do run time to time. They do catch fish. But for the majority of the time, we're running, um, like I said, the strips. That's just what we prefer. And they work. They work great. Okay, so let's continue talking about meat rigs. Let's break it down to the components. Let's put one together. Um, and then we'll get into some more of the finer details about it uh, as we go along. So I've opened up one of those uh, Dreamweaver uh, packages with the strips. I've taken one of the strips out. And that's what I have right here in my hand. Uh, you can see they're about five, six inches long. There's a shiny side that has the scales and the skin on it. And then there's the inside, the flesh side. This is obviously going to be your tractor side. And we're going to show you how to set that up here in just a little bit. Um, so that's what a meat strip is. That's the pre-prepared. Like I said, the big ones like that. Completely different animal. Uh, different preparation. Different meat heads as well that you're going to need to fish these things. But we'll talk about that more here in just a little bit. So meat rigs, um, let's talk about the components, how they go together, uh, what makes them a meat rig. Let's start off here, the companies that make them. Bunches, obviously, bunches and bunches. We love Dreamweaver. Uh, you you kind of gain confidence in a company and their products as you go along, you fish for long enough and you catch, uh, you know, you just build that trust in, uh, in certain lures. Dreamweaver has gained our trust over the years and many, many other people around here. So we use almost all uh, Dreamweaver meat rigs. Uh, we love them. They work. Uh, but there are some other really good companies and I'm not bad mouthing anybody. That's just us. That's just us. And I know other people have their uh, devotions and I, I get it and I'm not knocking anybody. But some of the other really good ones out there. Uh, Big Water makes some really good ones. I don't have one here. I wish I did. But Diabolical Tackle uh, makes some excellent meat rigs. Um, I know the guy that owns the company and he takes his time and really um, he fishes a tremendous amount of time on the water. So the guy knows what he's doing, so Diabolical makes some great ones. Big Weenie makes some outstanding meat rigs. A lot of guys use these around here, and there's nothing wrong with them at all. Stinger, good meat rigs as well. Um, and, and then there's a KRW. I got one of those right here. KRW makes some really good meat rigs. And I know KRW is changing a lot of the ways that they, uh, uh, they do things. New owner uh, for KRW. I know I'm pretty sure he's wanting to get a new meat head for these things. Uh, so some changes coming with KRW, but that's just a few of the companies in a nutshell. And like I said, we're Dreamweaver guys, but I'm not bashing any of these other ones. These will all catch fish for you. So wherever your loyalties are or whatever your trust is, hey, stick with it. I get it. So let's talk about um, the components. And I've got a Dreamweaver meat rig right here in front of me. <clears throat> Excuse me. Almost all meat rigs are built the same. They're the same things, um, except for a few small changes on some. So meat rig itself, the main portion usually has about three T's or ties. Some have two, some have, most have three. And it's on a leader about 48 inches long. And the flies themselves are spaced out, oh, I don't know, 10 to 12 inches apart. So that is the main teaser portion of the meat rig. Behind that, and this is what one thing I love about Dreamweaver, is they separate the, the teaser section from the meat head section by a swivel. So if you want to use this teaser section with a different style of meat head, it's as easy, as easy as just taking that swivel off, changing out your meat head, and you got a new presentation. So that's, I give Dreamweaver big props on that. That's smart. Uh, but that really is a meat rig in itself. The forward portion attaches to a flasher, and whether, uh, whether you want to use Dreamweaver flashers or another type company, we prefer Dreamweaver. And this is where their 10 inch flashers really shine. Really, these are called meat flashers uh, because that's what most people use them for. The eight inch we talked about before in one of the other videos, 
But you can see the difference in size between that 8 inch and that 10 inch. 10 inch obviously a little more thump in the water, a little more flash, a little more traction. Um, and they really work well for, for meat rigs. Can't, I'm not saying you can't use an 8 inch for them. A lot of guys do. And uh, we do too from time to time. And they also work. But that 10 inch is a great way to go. They're also fished commonly behind those big fish style flashers. 10 inch to 12 inch um, and many varieties companies out there. Those work really well as well. You can use paddles. I've seen some guys use the big 11 inch paddles. Um, not real common. Uh, it can be done and it, it can be effective. I'm not saying don't, or I'm not saying to not do it. I'm just saying it's not very common, but it, it, is, it is doable. So how do we connect this? So obviously this is your flasher. Your line comes down, connects to that flasher. Behind here, on the back here, you got a swivel. And you're just gonna attach that teaser section directly to the back of that flasher. So it's just swivel to swivel. You're connected. So now your teaser section is following behind that flasher. That flasher is rotating through the water. These uh, fly teasers are going through the water, creating flash and attraction. And then all the way back here, about 48 inches or so behind all that, um, is your meat head itself. So there's a bunch of different meat heads out there, UV, glow, flat, you name it, they're out there. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about color later. But you can't really go wrong with just a straight UV meat head. Um, and this is, this is one of the meat heads built for the strips, strips only. This one is not big enough to take that whole cut bait herring. Um, it's, it's just got a, a gap wide enough to, for the strips. So once you've got your flasher attached to your meat rig, your teasers are on, you check your teasers, they all look good. You're out there, you're ready to fish this thing. You're gonna put your, uh, your meat into that, I'm sorry, your meat strip into that meat head. It's nothing more than, you're gonna take your meat strip, shiny side out, and it's gonna slide right inside that meat head. Now these have been brined, like I said, with the salt, so they're nice and, nice and tight going in there. I like to try to really jam these things in there. I think a little bit more uh, a little bit more weight up here in the nose helps these things rotate uh, really well. Actually gives them a little bit better presentation. So I'll actually try to take my thumb and jam that in there as far as I can. And then I'm just going to grab a, a toothpick and all the Dreamweaver products, all the meat rigs for Dreamweaver come with two or three toothpicks in them. I'm going to toothpick that meat head right inside there. There's a couple holes right here in the head itself. It's going to go right through there, out the other side. I'm going to grab some snips. Watch your eyes with these sometimes, they can fly. And that meat head right there is ready to fish. Let me say this though real quick about, um, about meat heads. Tuning on these things is crucial. So when you're fishing these things through the water, this uh, flasher is going through the water, it's, it's rolling, it's imparting some, some motion on your, on your rig. But all the way back here, by the time you get about four feet behind you where your meat head is, it's quieted down quite a bit. And then you're back here to your meat head. Now your meat heads have a curve to them. You can see right there that, that plastic strip has a little curve to it going down, which uh, causes this meat head to roll through the water, which makes it look like a dying bait fish. Now, the number one most crucial thing to meat rig fishing is the way that these things roll. Really, you could, you could have any flasher up there. You could have the best flasher in the world on the right day at the right time. And if these things aren't rolling correctly, uh, you're not going to catch a fish. What I look for is about maybe one to one and a half rolls per second. So I'll drop these things in the water before I put them out on my rigs. I'll drop them down in the water next to the side, you know, to the side of the boat, and I'll watch how they're rolling through the water. And I, I got a specific way, a certain count in my head where I know that they're rolling correctly. Like I said, one roll to maybe a one and a half, at the most two rolls per second is your optimum uh, rolling speed for these meat heads. Dreamweaver, they, they got a little bit of a give to them so you can actually tweak these a little bit. You know, if they're rolling too fast, you can, uh, you can tweak them back and forth a little bit. If they're rolling too slow, you can give them a little twist, a little tweak, and you can get that optimum speed. <clears throat> Some of the other meat heads out there, like the, uh, the John Kings, uh, the Stingers, 
the big weenies. These things are, well, the big weenies got some, uh, some play in them. But uh, especially like the John Kings, um, some of the Rise Davis heads, there's not a whole lot of play in those. But uh, I can say this about John King. Uh, he has some of the best meat heads on the market. I'll tell you that right now. I fished a bunch of them. And, excuse me, <coughs> his, his meat heads coming out of the package, I think, have by far uh, the best roll. And they don't move. And they don't bend an inch, and they, they stay true. So uh, I'm going to give uh, Captain John King a big thumbs up for me right there um, for just having those, you know, that, that kind of product on the market. Uh, so anyway, that really is a meat rig in a nutshell. Flasher, teaser section, two or three teasers on them, normally three, sometimes two. Um, and then down to your meat head section. Got my snips there. And that is how you assemble a meat rig. And like I said, watch your roll. It's crucial to have that correct speed in the water. If that thing's buzzing through the water like that, you're never going to get a fish. They're just not going to hit it. If it's going too slow, again, it's just not going to look right. You just want that nice up and down and roll. Give it that nice dying bait fish look. So let's talk about a little bit about how we space the hook to the meat rig. These strips, uh, they, they come with, most of them come with some kind of a spacer, like the Dreamweaver comes with a tubing on there, so it's already set. That hook's going to run right back there by the end of that tail on that strip, and it's going to be set up for you all day. Day in and day out, you got it set. Some other, uh, some other products, some other companies' products, allows you to set that length that you, as you want it. And the way that they do that, there's nothing on there as far as that tubing or anything else. You just put a toothpick into the hole back here where the or where the, uh, the line goes through, and I'll show you. Get another toothpick. So you get to the length, or you, what I like to do is I like to pull a little bit of extra line out. I'll jam a toothpick down in there. I don't even know if I even can with these dream weavers. They're pretty tight. But if you jam a toothpick down in there, and then snip that off. And then you can pull the line. It'll actually pull that toothpick in a little bit more. And you can set that length then where you prefer. If you want it to run a little bit back behind the strip, you can do that. If you want it to run a little bit closer to the lure itself, you can do that. It really makes it a little bit more adjustable. So some companies go that route. And that's fine. Um, it's not my most preferred way, but it, it definitely does work. Uh, there's a gazillion other ways out there to do that. In fact, if you want to check out our meat rig, uh, make it yourself meat rig video, I'll put a link right up here. We show you some unique ways that you can set up these meat rigs on uh, some custom ways that might, uh, might put a, a few more fish in the boat for you. But that's uh, really uh, how you adjust that, that hook back there behind that, uh, or to, to fish along with that meat strip. So we've talked about what a meat rig is. We've talked and we've shown you how to hook them up, how to rig them. We've shown you what kind of attractors to use uh, along with them. The 10 inch stream weaver, like I said, is great. The 10 and 12 inch fish styles are great. You can use paddles as well. We've talked about the different brands and that really the styles, they're really all about the same. So when you, when you say meat rig, you know, we, no matter which brand you open up, you're really going to get about the same thing every time. You're going to get that teaser section. You're going to get that meat head section, um, which is going to have the, the meat head itself, obviously, that you put the strip in. Uh, so really, nothing changes much as far as in between companies from company to company. They're all pretty much built the same. Some slight differences, subtle differences, but the same product. Let's talk about how we fish these things and how we, uh, what, um, what presentations how, or how we fish them on our boat. And really, meat rigs can be fished on any presentation on the boat, whether it be downriggers, uh, dipsy divers, low divers, high divers, um, lead core, copper, uh, any presentation, these, these are, are usable and effective fish catchers. Um, I love them on downriggers, first and foremost, especially after that sun's come up, the water, especially on a clear day, you know, that water is, uh, is lightened up, the sun's penetrating, the fish have pushed down deep into that cold water column, um, way under the thermocline or maybe even hugging bottom. Uh, this is when these meat rigs can really become effective. So we can use our down riggers. We'll throw the heavy cannonballs on there and we'll throw these things way down by the bottom um, or well under that thermocline 
to, to entice those big those big kings down there they, they might be totally turned off on the bite but you put one of these down there and you tick them off that big that big rotator comes by flashing in their face and then what looks like that wounded bait fish comes trolling by a second second and a half later and they see that you can really trigger some nice instinctive bites um, on the king salmon so down riggers are great late day um, or early afternoon you know before the sun starts to go down you know fish them down there deep um, low divers um, you know throw them down on the low divers just like like I was just talking about on those down riggers get them down there deep um, get them down there below that thermocline get them down there where the fish have turned off fishing or they've turned off eating rather and uh, you're just instinct getting that instinctive bite to go we fish them some on the high divers, not so much. We, we normally reserve our high divers for flash or fly, but these can be fished on high divers. We've done it many, many times, and we've caught many, many fish. Uh, coppers, cores, absolutely, especially, well, I want, there's no rule of thumb on it, and I've said that bunches of times, but typically meat rigs for us are 300 coppers in on out, um, but we, we will run them on 200 coppers on out from time to time. But really, the 300 coppers on out because you're getting down in those deeper water columns. You know that's a, that's a great great presentation, uh, but no set rule of thumb in any way. Don't be afraid to mix it up a little bit. 300 coppers though on plus, you know 400, 450s, 500, 600s. These things absolutely produce lead core as well. <clears throat> uh, 10 colors plus on lead core, absolutely. Eight colors plus on lead cores. You betcha, they're gonna work. Do we fish these things straight off in the morning? Absolutely. We will throw at least one or two meat rigs out with our presentation almost every morning. Unless we know it's been an, an absolute pristine spoon bite or an absolute pristine plug bite or whatnot. You know, maybe not, but still, I'm gonna have the inkling to put a meat rig or two down into our, into our presentation. You got these great big flashers going through the water. At the very minimum, even if they're not eating on the, or feeding on meat rigs at that time, those big flashers, do a great job of at least bringing the fish into your spread and even if they're not gobbling down on your meat rigs they might you know that spoon might come floating by in a little bit or a flash or fly and they're gonna knock they're gonna knock that instead so even if they're the bites not on on a meat rig I still like them out there like I said just for that attraction factor so yeah in the mornings absolutely uh, as the day goes on I'm gonna leave them out there flash versus non flash in the mornings, I do like to go. Well, I do like to go a little bit. Some of the darker, darker flashers, the black, uh, the black spin doctors, uh, some of the darker type colors. I'm not saying that's again a not not a set rule of thumb. And then uh, also with the glow in the mornings, like this uh, double pearl, uh, ten inch, great in the mornings. But you can leave that out there because it's got a lot of flash as well. As the sun comes up, it's still going to work. So as the sun does come up, I do like to change over more in the flash. You know, especially if it's an overcast day, you can leave the dark stuff on or the glow stuff on, especially if it's got a lot of nice chop on the water so that sunlight's not penetrating through the water and getting those fish to scatter. You can leave the glow on and the dark colors on, absolutely. But if you got gin clear water, flat calm, fish are down deep, sun is really up high, uh, it's not a bad idea to go to a little bit more flash, uh, give them, you know, get, get, it, get their attention a little bit more. Okay, so let's talk about color. Uh, and I've said this in the past, there is no set chart uh, for, for figuring out the right color for any fishing application. I, I wish there was. Uh, if there was, I'd put it right up. I'd give it to you for free. I'd put a link on here for free. Uh, but there's not. Uh, there is some small um, basic rules of thumbs that, that do work. Uh, but again, it, it's not the end of the line. It's not the absolute, and you all know that. I, I wish I wish there was, but there's not. So let's talk about colors uh, just a little bit you know, to give you some ideas. What I like to do meat rigs uh, early in the season, May, June, I like blues. And a lot of guys out there I know do as well. Uh, the blues seem to produce pretty well. Some of the uh, the blue in the, uh, in the teaser sections, uh, blue and glow, uh, the, the Dreamweaver confetti, I don't, I don't have one here, but the confetti um, teasers work really good in May and June. Um, as the water, you'll, want, you'll see the water color start to change. It gets more of a greenish hue, a tint to it. And that's usually in June, maybe later June. Um, that's when I really start changing over to greens. 
Uh, and I got some here, some of my favorites. Uh, the green, UV green, absolutely. Uh, there's another one here I just had. I apologize. But it's the Dreamweaver uh, Green Gas. Love that thing, green. The, the Kevin's Girlfriend, absolutely. The, uh, the Blue Bubble Glow works good. There's still enough green tints in that thing that really works as well. Also along with green, I'm using some more of the higher flash uh, teasers, like this uh, Blue Mirage or maybe just a straight no -seam. They work as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then as the season progresses into early fall, like August, into September, a lot of the yellows really start working well. Uh, and this is just what I've seen over the years and what I know works for, for quite a few guys around here. So that's a basic rule of thumb. As far as meatheads go, if I was just going to, if you said, hey, Chris, you can have one style meathead and that's it, I would go right there with the, uh, the UV, the Dreamweaver UV meatheads. No paint on them, no sticker other than just an eyeball on there. And these things catch fish day in, day out. Probably, I, I don't know by percentage, but by far um, our best producers on, on our boat, the, just the straight UV heads. There's other heads out there, hey, I get it, you know, some have some really fancy paint on them. Um, some have some uh, UV stickers on them with some paint dots on there. And, you know, they do work. Some, um, like the Rise Davis, will have checkered patterns, scale patterns, stripes, you name it, they're out there. <coughs> um, but if I could only have one head, if you told me, hey, you get one meat rig and one head, I would go with a pickled sunshine meat rig and a UV head. That'd be my choice. They just work. So greens and UV, always good out there. I will say this about purples. There's usually about a two or three week, or even less some years, section of the year where all of a sudden purple just explodes out there. and Everything that you put down there with purple is getting bit. Um, that flash right there, that Kingfisher, has been lights out for the last several years when the purple is really hot. Uh, the purple haze, Dreamweaver purple haze, if that's going, that can be just a lights out rig. But there's normally, like I said in the year, uh, a section of time when purple really goes good. So keep your ear to the bait shops, to the charter guys, to the websites, you'll know when that's going to happen. But that kind of gives you a, a general idea of the, cal of the color selection that we go by throughout the year. Blues uh, in the greens, along with some uh, mirage, some noceums. And then green stay in the in the same or stay on our boat. Then we also add in some yellows towards the end of the year. So I hope that gives you an idea on colors. I know, like I said, I wish there was a magic wand I could wave and tell you exactly which color to use on any given day, but it doesn't it doesn't exist. But uh, this should give you a good a good head start. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to talk about here today is speed. And not only I'm not only talking about the speed at the surface, your speed over ground in your boat. But absolutely more important, knowing the speed down at your, your trolling speed down at your cannonballs. And that's why I think it, it's imperative if you're going to fish meat rigs um, that you need to invest in a, a fish hawk or a depth rater or something along those lines. It's going to give you those trolling speeds at depth. Uh, speed is that critical when it comes to successful meat rig fishing. Um, you might be running 2.0 at the top and down below due to currents and whatnot. Your trolling speed, your, your lure speed might be 2.5 or more, or might be flip-flop in another way. So it's important to know those speeds. When it comes to speed on meat rigs, speed kills, um, and not in a good way. Speed kills like you're not going to get bit. Slow speeds are critical uh, for meat rigs. And when we fish meat rigs, what we want for trolling speeds, what I'm talking about is the speed down at depth at our cannonball, we want anywhere from 2.0 to 2.2. That's normal, our normal target area. And we'll dip down even as far as 1.9, 1.8 from time to time. Slower speeds are, are critical for your meat rig success. <clears throat> Excuse me. And when people are talking about running a, a meat program, you know, the AR meat program is going really good. Really what they're talking about is most likely they're fishing almost all meat on every one of their presentations. And that's what we do. When we go to a, a strict meat program, we yank almost everything else. We might leave a flasher fly in or two because they're pretty speed tolerant. Um, or some spoons out there that are speed tolerant, um, like the Dreamweaver Super Slims. They're very slow speed tolerant. Um, there's some other spoons out there as well. But we could, because we want to drop our speed down, whatever else we leave in the water has to tolerate those speeds as well. So those big spoons, 
uh, they don't do so well at those slower speeds and some other presentations. So we got to leave the things in that are going to keep producing and are going to keep attracting the fish. So bring your boat speed down, get those slow speeds down below as well for your meat rigs. Uh, like I said, 2.0 to 2.2, that's going to be your optimum speed. Now, as I've said in some other videos, if you start knocking fish on turns um, on your outside lines, so you know maybe that's a little bit faster, you can make those small adjustments. Um, you can zig, you can zag uh, to see where they're hitting at, if they are hitting on turns, whether it be your inside boards or your outside boards, to give you a little bit of idea on what uh, small adjustments you need to make as far as maybe I need to speed up a little bit or maybe I need to back off a little bit. So pay attention to those things as well. And don't be afraid, a great tactic that we use, um, we, go, we call it our night and day. Um, on one side of the boat, starboard side, we might put out all greens, UVs, you name it, whatnot, on the other side, we go completely opposite. And we, we're just hunting at that point. We're trying to figure out which, which colors that the fish want for that day. So if one side of the boat starts taking a bunch of knocks, now we know, okay, that's, that's what they want. And that's the speed they want and we'll make those adjustments accordingly. We'll pull the other side, we'll put on similar patterns or exact patterns, duplicates, and uh, it's a great way to pick up quite a few more bites. It can turn a five fish day or a four fish day into a 12 or 15 fish day. So look for those little things, make those adjustments. It, it, some days it's, it's easy, you go out there and you throw a whole bunch of stuff out there and the fish come in the boat. And other days it's a lot of work. Um, you're, you're humping all day long in the back of that boat, changing things out. Uh, making adjustments, you name it, um, it can really be work. But that's what separates those boats way up here from those boats that, that aren't, um, you know, aren't way up there. Uh, it's those guys and gals out there that uh, can make those small adjustments and work their tails off um, for those fish. So anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, talking about meat rigs. I hope you learned something. Um, if you did or if you want to talk about meat rigs, Get in the comment section down below. Tell tell me, tell everybody, what is your favorite meat rig program? What's your favorite colors? What do you like to use? What works best for you? Speed. Let's talk about everything. I'm not the best. Our boat isn't the best. And I've said that before. There's no such thing as the best. I don't know everything. I read the comments in our videos and I learn things. So I, I really appreciate that. And I appreciate everybody's generosity uh, in and being open with the information. And if you got questions, don't be afraid to ask in the comments. We all started at one point. We all. Don't, don't feel that just because you're new to the game um, that you're embarrassing yourself because you're asking a question. You're not. Uh, because if you're not, you're not learning. We all learned at one point. And everybody that's left some positive comments on this channel, I have not seen maybe one or two negative ones, and I nip those in the bud as fast as I can. Um, I really like the, the fact that we're building a really strong and positive community here to learn about this stuff. So hey, leave your information or leave information down below. Let people learn from you as well. And if you got a question, by all means, ask the question. Um, I'm going to answer it. And most of the time, a bunch of other uh, people on here, they're going to jump on there as well. And they're going to throw in their two cents. And you can take all that, all those tools, put them in your toolbox and take it out on the water. And you're going you're gonna to be much better for it. So hey, thank you for again for everybody that subscribed, watched the videos, um, been with us uh, for a couple years now on YouTube. We're, we're still going. We're going to keep building and building. So thanks again to everybody. If you got any questions you don't want to leave them below, you can always email me, email me chrisTangletackle at gmail.com. All one word, chrisTangletackle at gmail.com. I'm happy to talk to you um, right there privately if you need to. That's it. Thanks. Have a great weekend. We're going to be on the water soon. We'll see you out there.